Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. Well, I tell you what guys, I am... <laughs> I couldn't wait. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I could not wait uh, to talk about this knife. It's the MBK Sea Otter. And you, a lot of you guys probably already know that just by looking at it. But uh, what do I mean by I couldn't wait? Um, I've had this knife about a week. I've carried this knife pretty much every day for said week since I got it at Blade Show West. And I tell you what, guys, I am, this knife is, I would categorize it as phenomenal. I am absolutely thrilled with the Sea Otter. Now, this was one that I was definitely targeting at Blade Show West. I mean, you could say I went to Blade Show West to get the Sea Otter. That'd probably be a little bit of a fib. But I tell you what, <laughs> I was definitely, definitely looking for this one. And I'm super, super glad that I got one. And, you know, my buddy David, Eggs and Ham got one. And, you know, Peter and Christine, uh, they got one, maybe two? One, I believe. And everybody's saying the same thing. It, it's an amazing knife. And I'm, I'm not going to be any different, guys. What we're going to do is I'm just going to give you some first, you know, some of my initial thoughts after using it for a week. Uh, we'll do, we'll do, I mean, it's basically going to be, we'll do our spec check and all that good stuff. Uh, but I've been asked a question by quite a few people and I'm going to address that question in this video. So, all right, let's just take a look at it, guys. Check it out. Full titanium. Look at that tumbled finish on the sea otter. Very cool. Now, I will say that there were a few that had kind of the... The traditional Laconico Fuller, MBK Fuller there. Um, I did not grab one of those. I wasn't quite that lucky, but I got a Sea Otter, so I'm happy. That, that, trust me, I am very, very happy. Full titanium. We got a titanium clip. It's not deep carry. That's okay. I'm perfectly happy with that. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, frame lock. There you've got your uh, lock relief on the outside there. Dual thumb stud, yes indeed. Now it is right hand, right hand tip up carry only. So, and I'm not 100% sure about left handed versions. I know that was one question I was asked, and you know I need to ask Ray so I can be able to uh, answer that question a little bit more fluently, shall we say? But right now, uh, right hand tip up carry, dual thumb stud deployment. This knife just rockets out there. The action. Yes, it's running on phosphor bronze washers. Man, this action is silly. Just silly. I am, man, I'm loving this thing. It is broken in super nicely. A little wiggle, a little shake. I mean, that initial drop, I mean, it comes down to the thumb, a little bit of shake, and it is shut. Now, CPM 154 on the blade steel there. There again, you've got that awesome tumbled finish on it. Yes, indeed. Look at that. Super looking blade. There you go. You got the got the MBK logo there. I'll try to... There it is. Try to get some flash on it. There it is. Super, super love the drop point blade. I mean, you guys know me. I'm, I'm a sucker for a good drop point blade. You got some jimping there that is... Yep, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Holds that thumb right there. Your choil... Yep, done very well. And I tell you what, guys, this knife came sharp. Now, I've asked if it's a it's a good cutter. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. To be perfectly honest with you, I haven't measured the behind-the-edge space because of you, or behind-the-edge measurement, because if you look, it's got a, it does have kind of a thin grind on it. I tell you what, it cuts, though. Um, I did take this to work. I haven't used it on a lot of rope. I did use it on a little bit just to kind of test it out worked fine love it yep no problem at all um I, i'm just super super stoked to have this knife in my collection guys so, all right let's do a spec check and we'll kind of move on from there so what do we got overall one two three four five six you're looking at just about what a six and one, two, three, four, five, six and three quarters. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't crazy. 
you have about a three and three quarter inch handle and then you're pushing out right about um, a three inch blade with just slightly over a two and three quarter inch cutting edge. Now, oh man, oh, grip length. Oh, let's check out grip length. Now, I kind of grip it, natural grip, full four finger, even getting it down there. And we're looking at, I'm looking at about three and a quarter. Yeah, about three and a quarter. So those of you with larger hands, you know, it is kind of on the smaller side. And I'll kind of show you in comparison with another couple of knives here in a minute. But I mean, it fits my hand terrifically. Uh, yeah. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. It's a sweet knife. So let's see here. Let's get some other comparisons. Let's throw out the bug out because that's going to be a good comparison that everybody is pretty familiar with. And it's pretty close. Obviously, the bug out's got it a little bit on the blade. I mean, it might be pushing a half inch and then it's got it's got it on the, the handle by a quarter of an inch, you know, ish, maybe three eighths, a little more. Um, I will throw the PM2 out there just because that's kind of what we do. There you go. Obviously, the PM2 is a much larger knife, obviously. Um, one that people have been kind of looking at recently. Here is the Devil's Finger from Finch. And Devil's Finger's got it by just, just a little bit. And just so you all know, uh, the Devil's Finger is a fantastic, fantastic carry. So is this. But here's the big one, guys. Here's the question that I have been asked is how it compares to a small Sebenza. So there you go. That's pretty much how it compares in size. The handles are really super close. Looks like the Sebenza might have it by just a hair, probably, man, not even a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth or so on the blade, but that's pretty much how it stacks up with a small Sebenza. Now, <laughs> okay, I've had this small Sebenza for probably at least two years. Um, it's a fantastic knife. It's a good knife. No issues with that knife at all. Um, I have probably carried and used the Sea Otter more in the last week than I have the Sebenza the whole time I've had it. The truth is the truth, guys. Um, I don't know why. I, I Well, I do know why. Because I absolutely love the Sea Otter. Like I said, the CRK, great knife. No issues with it whatsoever. The Sea Otter, for me, just a little bit better. Absolutely no question. Um, yeah, it is. That is my... That is my full opinion. I still love that blade shape. It's an awesome blade shape. Don't get me wrong. But guys, I'm a Laconico fan. I'll admit it. And could we say it's the Laconico effect? Yes, it it very well could be. There could be some of that in there. Um, I've met Ray. I know Ray. Uh, I've talked to Ray. He's an absolutely wonderful person. Nothing against Chris Reeve at all. Um, he's a fantastic knife designer. Maybe... Maybe not. I don't know. Um, All I know, and I can tell you, my truth is, I like the Sea Otter better than I like my small Sebenza. That's that's just the way it is. All right, well, let's get a weight on it. We didn't do that. I'll get a weight on it. I'll kind of show you how it carries here real quick. And oh, let's turn her on first. What do we got? We have... All right, starting out in ounces. 3.0. And grams, 86. We'll check out the carry real quick. And then I'll answer a couple more questions um, that we've been, that I've been getting asked here frequently. So there you go. As you can see, it's not deep carry at all. But I mean, we pretty much got about that standard half inch. Um, yes, I do like my deep carry knives. Absolutely. Does this bother me? Nope. I am loving this knife way too much to have something like that bother me. Absolutely. Um, a couple of other questions that I've been asked. Um, when, how much, uh, the when, I know they're building some guys. Uh, from what I understand, they pretty much sold out of what they had at Blade Show West. No surprise there at all. Um, they're building them. 
I, I'm not sure when they're going to be available. Keep a lookout um, on their Instagram. And if you don't have Instagram, guys, I will try to keep you updated as much as I can. But watching their Instagram, they're very, very good about putting out uh, that type of stuff. And go to MontereyBayKnives.com. Um, I believe they may have email alerts. I think they have email alerts on there as well. I usually pay attention to Instagram. That's that's where I get the information on their releases and stuff is Instagram. Um, but I believe they do have email alerts. So go check out MontereyBayKnives.com. I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can do that if you would like. But yeah, and how much? Ray told, well, Ray and Sanford both said that when they're in the store and they get them up, they're probably going to run right about that, right about 420 is what they're going to run. This is Monterey Bay Knives' first full U.S. made knife. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It most definitely is. Um, I can honestly tell you when I bought my Sabenza, I've almost, uh, you know, honestly, I've kind of had buyer's remorse the whole time. I really have. Um, that much, spending that much on a knife, yeah, I know. A lot of you do it, and I'm happy for you. If it makes you happy, go awesome. Awesome. There's something out there for everyone. I've pretty much had buyer's remorse ever since I bought that CRK. Honestly, I, I really have. Um, and do I have buyer? I mean, from the minute I bought it, I'll, I'll, I'll yes. From the minute I bought it. Great knife. No issues with the knife. Had buyer's remorse. This knife, not even remotely. <laughs> no way, no how. Yes, it's a, Mon it's a Monterey Bay knife. It's a Ray Laconico knife. Ray Laconico is involved in it. Yes, I understand that. Ray is my favorite designer. And that probably has a lot to do with it. I'm just telling you the way it is, guys. I have no, no remorse about getting my hands on this knife like I did the Sabenza. Um, as a matter of fact, the, Menza, the Sabenza might be going up for sale soon. Keep your eye open for that. But anyhow, it's a wonderful knife, guys. If you can put the money together for one, yes. Yes, <laughs> do it. I, that's all I can tell you. Do it. Um, they're, all, they're basically all handmade here in the U.S., I know Ray, he was kind of joking about doing all the work on him. And, you know, they give him and Sanford give one another crap back and forth. But, yeah, it, it guys, it is totally, totally worth it. It's definitely worth it to me. I mean, I can tell you that. It is absolutely worth it to me, without a doubt. So, like I said, guys, if you're interested in them, keep your eyes open, MontereyBayKnives.com. Keep your eyes open on the Monterey Bay Knives Instagram page. When they have some, they drop them. Guys, they are, they're going to go. They're going to go. Um, in my opinion, call me crazy. That, that's fine. Whatever. Um, if they keep doing this, they're going to give Chris Reeves a run for their money. My honest opinion. Agree? Disagree? That's fine. No worries. You know, there's, like I said, there's something out there for everybody. But, in my opinion, they are. So, there you go, guys. My initial thoughts and impressions of the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter. You're probably not surprised, and that's fine. You know, I love what Monterey Bay and Ray put out. That That's just my thing, my style. And yeah, if you can, just do it. That's all I'm saying. All right, guys, really appreciate you checking it out with me today. As always, like, subscribe, leave me that comment. You know I love talking to you. Until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.